multiplying polynomials. Okay, so we have added and subtracted polynomials. Now we're going to be multiplying them. One thing we're going to need to remember is that with exponents, when we multiply them, if they've got the same base, we add the exponents. Okay, We're going to be doing a lot of that, so make sure that you keep that in mind. All right, so concept one is multiplying monomials. All right, so I have um, this. I have two monomials, and I'm multiplying them. Um, and one thing I need to remember, um, one thing we need to remember, is that between this 2 and this x squared, this is multiplication. And between this 5 and this x, this is multiplication. So we can move things all around as much as we want, and um, it's still going to remain the same. Okay, so I have basically 2 times x squared times 5 times x. Okay, um, I just expanded that out, dropped the parentheses, and it doesn't matter what order I do these in, because it's all multiplication. Okay, our first step is going to be grouping factors with like bases. So this is kind of the same as um, getting like terms together. Um, so I'm going to identify that, oh, this is a constant, this is a number, this is a constant, and then both of these have x as their variable, okay, as their base. When we're multiplying, we don't have to worry about the fact that this one is x squared and this one is just x because we're multiplying them together, all right? You can think of it like um, fractions, okay? If the denominators are different, then we can't add them or subtract them, but if they're different, we can multiply them, okay? So I'm going to rewrite those so they are next to each other. So I've got 2 times 5, and then I've got x squared times x, right? I've got my same bases together, and you can put parentheses around those if you want, just so you know you're kind of going to do those a little separately, but you don't have to. Then you're going to multiply the constants. 2 times 5 is 10. All right. And then you're going to add the exponents with the same variable. So this is x squared. This is x, which means it's x to the first. 2 plus 1 is x to the third. Okay. And if I broke this down into x times x, we would see um, even more clearly that this would be x times x times x or x to the third. And then that's just 10x to the third. All right. Okay. Now, next one. So now we've got more than one variable. All right. I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. I'm going to go through. I've got a 0.2. I've got a negative 20. I've got an x squared. And then a y and a y squared. Okay. So I'm going to expand this out and move my um, factors together. So I've got 0.2 times negative 20. I've got um, times x squared, and then times y times y squared. Okay. And again, I can throw parentheses around these if I want to make sure I can keep them clear. Um, but then I'm just going to multiply these values add my exponents, and put it all back together. So 0 0.2 times negative 20 is going to be a negative. 0 0.2 times 20 is going to be 4. Basically, I have 2 for, for each 10 is the way I think about it. So negative 4. And then I've got my x squared. That's alone, so I'm not going to do anything to that. I'm just going to bring it down. And then I've got y times y squared or y to the first times y to the second, so that's going to be y to the third. Okay? And this is the, the level of steps I'd be looking for. Okay? Original problem, rewriting it so um, your bases are next to each other, okay? your factors are similar, and then um, your finished solution. Okay? Here's another one. It's a little more complicated. We've got three monomials we're multiplying now. So, we've got 3xy to the third, 4x squared, a negative y to the one-third, 
and z squared. Okay. Um, now, for this one, there's a couple things about this that are different that you should notice. The first is this negative y. All right. I always like to drop a 1 there. Okay. Because that, that helps me remember that when I'm going through for my like terms, or my like factors, all right, I've got something there. I've got something I need to pull away from that y. All right? So I'd have 3 times 4 times negative 1. Okay? And then go through for my x's. I've got a 1x, I've got an x squared, and I've got no x there. So I'd have x times x squared. And I've got y to the third and y to the one-third. y to the third times y to the one-third. And then I've got z to the second. And that's kind of sitting out there by itself. Okay, and now we just multiply and add. So this is going to be um, 12, negative 12, x to the third, y to the, and be careful here, a lot of people would look at this and they would say, oh, well, 3 times 1 third, but remember it's not multiplying. So this is actually going to be y to the, and we don't want to use this as a mixed number, we want it as an improper fraction. So y to the 10 thirds, z to the second. Okay, This is about as complicated as you're going to get, um, and you probably won't even have to deal with fractions very much, but I do want you to know um, what to do with them if you do run into it.